meeting of the Howell Township Zoning Board to be open, adequate notice having been given, pursuant to the New Jersey Open Public Meeting Act in the following manner. First, on March 31st, 2023, a copy of said notice was mailed to the Asbury Park Press and the Star Ledger. Second, on March 31st, 2023, a copy of said notice was hand delivered to the clerk of the Township of Howell. Third, on March 31st, 2023, said notice was posted in the office of the zoning board and on the bulletin board in the Howell Township Municipal Building, 4567 Route 9, Howell Township, New Jersey. In accordance with the Fire Prevention Code and your safety, please be advised that this facility is designed with two emergency exits, which are at the front and rear of the meeting room. Furthermore, smoking is not permitted in the municipal building. Please take note that this meeting is being videotaped for possible future broadcast on Howell Township TV 77. This meeting is a judicial proceeding. Any questions or comments must be limited to the issue of what the board can legally consider in reaching their decision, and the decorum appropriate to a judicial hearing must be maintained at all times. Thank you. And just a note of housekeeping, the men's room up here is out of order, so if anybody needs the men's room, you need to go downstairs. Okay? Well, that's not here, so we don't have to worry about that. Well, okay. Hopefully we won't need it. <laughs> Thank you, Eileen. May we uh, have a roll call, please? Yes, you may. Mr. Barillo? Here. Mr. Cantor? Here. Mr. Hughes has been excused. Mr. Mertens? Here. Mr. Orozco has been excused. Mr. Stanton has been excused. Mr. Ryan? Here. Mr. Rebell? Here. And Chairman Saya? Here. You have a quorum. Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Andy, can I have a swearing in of the professionals, please? Yes. Mr. Cunliffe, do you swear the testimony you give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I, hope I do. Please state your name for the record. Charles Cunliffe, your professional engineer sworn. Mr. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> item five on the agenda, approval of minutes. October 23rd, 2023, regular meeting, eligible voters, Barillo, Cantor, Hughes, Ryan, Rebell, and Saya. Can I have a motion, please? Make a motion to approve. Cantor. I'll second that. Ryan. Roll call, please, Eileen. Mr. Barillo. Yes. Mr. Cantor. Yes. Mr. Ryan. Yes. Mr. Rebell. Yes. And Chairman Saya. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Eileen, any vouchers? I have no vouchers. Do we have any correspondence? Yes, I have a letter from Alexander Pavlov. He is the attorney for Davidis Matzinisinkis. That's um, case number BA 23-13? Yes. And he asked that this application um, be carried to the next meeting as they were finally able to locate an appraiser who do a report on the property, but it wouldn't be done in time for tonight, so he asked that we carry it to the next meeting, which would be January the 8th. 08 January. And that would be with no further notice. With no further notice. Okay, so anyone here in the audience that is here for case number BA2313, Davides Matazinkis, this application is being carried to 08 January 2024 with no further notice. Thank you. I also spoke to Mr. Pape today. He's the attorney for application number BA20-101A, AARSHW property. That was actually carried to tonight for scheduling purposes uh, because we didn't have dates. <coughs> we asked that it also be carried to, excuse me one minute here, February 26, 2024 with no further notice and he granted an extension of time through March 30th, 2024. Through March 20th, you said? March 30th, 30th. Of 2024. That's what I thought, okay. But the date for the hearing is February 26th. Yes. Mr. Chairman, is this what we already approved a couple years ago? I'm not sure. It, it was approved a couple years ago. They're coming in to amend the approval slightly. It has to do with the flex, okay. Yes. Thank you. 
Okay, so anyone that's here for case number BA20 101A AARSHW Property LLC. This application is being carried to 26 February 2024 with an extension of time to 30 March 2024 with no further notice. That's all the correspondence I have. Thank you. Resolutions. Resolution BA18-04X, Sean and Christina Connolly. Resolution granting three one-year extensions of time for a bulk variance approval to construct a two-story single-family residence. Eligible voters, Barillo, Cantor, Hughes, Ryan, Rebel, and Saya. Do I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. Rebel. Second. Second. Barillo. Eileen, roll call, please. Mr. Barillo? Yes. Mr. Cantor? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Rebell? Yes. And Chairman Saya? Yes. Motion carries resolutions memorialized. Okay. 2023, year, year in review, or we call it the yearly review. Do we want to leave that till the end? We can. So we could add tonight's if you want. Okay, that'll be fine. Right. Thank you. So then that brings us. <coughs> The case number BA2320, Janine and Josephine, or Janine and Joseph Marone. Yes. yes. Okay, Andy, would you have them? You could sit at one of either the tables. One. Oh, cool. There's mics on either, at each table. Okay. Hello, hello. And Mr. Marone, will, Marone, will you be testifying or speaking to the board? Yes. Okay, can, can you raise your right hand? Do you swear the testimony you give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. Please just state your name for the record and spell your last. Joseph Marone. Uh, last name spelled M-A-R-R-O-N-E. I apologize for mispronouncing. <laughs> no, that's fine. Okay. Ms. Marone, uh, will you be speaking as well? Um, I can. Maybe just, just to be safe, yeah. uh, you swear the testimony you give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God. I do. And please state your name for the record and spell your last. Uh, Janine Maroney, M-A-R-R-O-N-E. Your uh, applicant witnesses are sworn. Okay, Mr. thank you, sir. So this is a type, uh, it's a bulk <laughs> variance for additions to a single family dwelling on an undersized lot. The description is the application of Janine and Joseph Maroney as applicant and owner seeking bulk variance approval to remove, construct, two second story additions to an existing single family dwelling on an undersized lot on premises known as block 14, lot 5, 239 Bry Avenue. These additions require set yard, side yard setback variance relief for both side yards. Expiration date, March 20, 2024. Sir. Charlie? Yeah, Mr. Chair, if I could just jump in, I probably speed this along. Uh, so the subject property, it's on the south side of Bree Avenue. It's about just over under a thousand feet west of Lakewood Farmingdale Road, kind of Route 547. Uh, the property uh, currently consists of a two-story single-family dwelling. Uh, um, the first story um, isn't fully two-story above the east side of the structure. There looks like there's, um, uh, you can see it in the picture there. Um, bedroom or some type of space on the first floor and then there's a garage which doesn't have a second story over top of it. Um, the, side is uh, the lot is currently undersized. This is Airy 2. The existing lot is 0.65 acres. The lots look like it is, it's existed since the 40s. It's had a structure at least looking at aerials back to 1996. Uh, the width also deficient for the zone. 200 foot required were about 99.6 uh, feet. Exist, those are existing nonconformities. The applicant's not proposing any change to that with the application. Um, because of the deficient lot width, the existing structure does not comply with the uh, side yard setback to the east and westerly side lot line. 30 foot re is required where 21 foot exists. Um, so by adding a second story addition above the garage space and that first story on the left hand side of the screen there in Google Street View, uh, the applicant requires variance relief to both the east and west side yard line. They're basically matching the existing setback 21 feet. They're just 
adding a second story. Um, as far as the second story addition on, on both sides, uh, the existing second story I think only overhangs by about a foot. The addition overhangs about two feet plus or minus on both sides. Is that accurate, Mr. Maroney? Yeah, we tried to add a little bit okay. more space up there. Okay. And then just to clarify, right, so the existing floor plan for the second story that was provided indicates that there's three bedrooms. And Currently, yeah. And so basically you're not proposing any new bedrooms. It's just the configuration size is being modified so they're, the bedrooms are larger. Is that accurate? Yes. So uh, just to give a little uh, uh, extra detail, uh, we just moved our mother-in-law in, -law in uh, not long ago to live with us. And we have two children, an 11-year-old and a 4-year-old. And, and we're just trying to make a little bit more room so everybody doesn't, doesn't have to live on top of each other in these little small spaces. Everyone has their little, you know, a little bit larger areas to go retreat to. And that's it, really. Uh, we, we wanted to do the, uh, the second room on the other side just to uh, square off the house. So just to clarify, so I said there was uh, three bedrooms. So there's, there's currently four. Well, th yeah, there's four total. I, I, I thought you were talking about on the rear side of the house. There's okay. three bedrooms that uh, line the, the back side of the house. Okay, so you're not proposing any additional bedrooms, but there's one additional bath proposed? So we want to make the three bedrooms along the, the, the back of the house into two bedrooms. Yep. And then we're going to add the master bed. We want to add the master bedroom over the garage and then um, add a bathroom add a there. Bathroom. Gotcha. So it's one additional bathroom over what it exists, exists currently, correct? Correct. Gotcha. All right. So uh, one additional bathroom. There's no change in bedrooms. Um, I would just say as a conditioning approval, applicants got to get Board of Health sign off on the additional bathroom. Usually, you know, they might have you have an engineer just sign something or an architect saying that there's no additional septic demand because you're on septic here, right? You don't correct. have. Correct. Okay. Um, and then as far as RSIS for parking, there's no change in bedrooms. The site's got to like an 80 foot by 18 foot, 20 foot wide driveway, which can accommodate more than what it would be even required for a five bedroom. Um, <laughs> uh, so I don't see any issues from that. As far as stormwater management runoff or anything like that, uh, the improvements are largely over the existing structure. You know, it's an additional one foot overhang. It's de minimis, it, it, you know, in my eyes. Um, I will say the applicant's architectural plan was provided based off of like a 1996 survey or something like that. There's you can see in the picture here, they didn't show those two parallel, um, angled parking spaces on the right-hand side of the picture. I would just say if the board acts favorably, they should provide a asphalt survey uh, just for closing out of any building permits. And if they can have those areas shown on it, that would just be helpful. Um, and then I would just say if the calculation when they get the asphalt shows that there's exceeding the impervious coverage, I would just say that the board grant that as part of this approval. Uh, because it's existing, it's just they're only adding a foot, you know, on, on the front and the back with uh, the overhang. So I don't take exception to it. Um, uh, what else do we have? Um, uh, right of way dedication. So the existing right of way across the property frontage is only 33 feet, feet wide. Our master plan recommends 50 foot for local roadways. Would the applicant have an issue with providing like right of way dedication on the frontage? It would be eight and a half feet and that just allows should the township ever have a need to widen the roadway in the future um, it gives them the ability to do that yeah. okay um, and then the last thing is curbing and sidewalk across the property frontage uh, I have no exception to the board granting that relief there's no curb or sidewalk along any of the adjacent properties along Bree Avenue um, that I can see um, and then you're proposing to reside here right and you've res lived here for a while right yeah so my mother bought the house okay. uh, when it was first built and uh, we're kind of just taken over from there families expanding and that kind of thing right yeah, yeah. you, you so live there this, you live this, there this is like our forever I've lived there my you know uh, since I was 15 years old gotcha okay no I think it's just important to get it on a record you know we have anytime we're seeing reconfiguration additional bathrooms you know I just want to know what's going on with it um, and then there's a couple of just plot details that are straightforward, clarifying your architectural, your architect can correct those as part of compliance. Is that? Yeah. Okay. That's really all I have, Mr. Chair. Okay. And then as, on the planning side, Jen, she had no issues from what I understand. No. And I mean, really the variance relief that they're asking for is in, you know, if this lot was area one, they probably would need de minimis 
relief from the setback requirements. Um, you know, it, the lot has existed since the 40s. There's a house that's existed there since, you know, at least 1996. You know, if this was further extending into the side yards, then could it have an impact, air, light, and open space? When you're looking at it from Bree Avenue, you know, it's going to just fill out the rest of the structure. You know what I mean? Uh, the view to the south of that, there's some properties that are encumbered by wetlands and conservation with the Matitaconk River. Got so it. I don't know that you're really impeding anyone's sight lines there in open space. Um, I really don't have any issue from it from a planning Thank you, John. Father. Thank you. John? Um, Charlie had mentioned the, the bump outs on the driveway. The only issue I would have is since it's not shown on the survey, um, Driveways have to be a minimum of five feet off the property line on that side. So uh, when the as-built is submitted uh, for the property, uh, just be aware that uh, you can't get any closer than five feet to the property line on, along that side. So if it does bump out, you may just have to cut back uh, just a bit. Okay. Um, so I don't know when that was uh, installed, but other than that, I have no issues. Thank you, John. Board members? How many bedrooms do you currently have? We currently have four total bedrooms. Oh, okay. And they're all upstairs? Yes. Okay, so you're going four bedrooms. And you're just staying with four bedrooms. Yes. You're just kind of moving them around and making them just larger. Just making them larger. And, with the yeah. addition. Yeah, they're very small. The three bedrooms are, we moved my mom in, and she, it's, she has no space. So just to give her more of a living space, you know. And the bathrooms are one additional? Yes. yes. Okay. And we're keeping them, like, you know, essentially in the same corner of the house there, so, No you know, crazy plumbing or anything like that, everything's... Just so, you know, the new, the new bedroom, that's the new master bedroom that's being built will be our room. Uh, My mom will get the current master, so she'll have a larger space and her own bathroom, not to share with the mm -hmm. kids. So this way the kids have their bathroom, she has her bathroom, we have our bathroom. And everybody's happy. Everybody's, everybody's well, that's the plan. <laughs> and Charlie, the... Um, with the extra bathroom, that has, is that something with the, with the septic? What happens with that? Yeah, Mom I think it's county. typically with, uh, with bedrooms they regulate that, but as a condition of any approval, they usually, Monmouth County Board of Health will issue a memo, like no issues or something like that. So I would just ask they get like a letter of no interest or something to that effect just to satisfy it. Okay, and um, I saw on your plans, you're putting in an automatic sprinkler system? No. No? Not that I'm aware of. Yeah, it's on your plans. Did you see that, Charlie? I did not see that, and that's not typically something that we regulate from a zoning perspective. I know. I, I, I found it to be a little strange, but I did see it on the, what, I, don't know, I forgot what page it was. Yeah, the first page. <coughs> that first page yeah. where it has all that. It, yeah, it's not something we asked for. It's not something that we're trying to do. I don't know I why. will say we've had issues with the architect, so I'm just hoping he didn't cut and paste from someone else's plans. <laughs> Yes, so as you can tell, you've been spelled our name wrong on the... Uh, yeah, on that, uh, maybe... Stuff uh, like this is, you know, I don't even know what I'm looking at, so... I want to say... Are those numbered? Maybe, like, number, is there, like, number 13 or... Above the electrical, maybe? Oh, if he cut and paste. I know I read it today. And I found it to be strange, so that's why I wanted to Yeah, so it. you're talking about, like, irrigation. No, not irrigation. Sprinkler and internal. Automatic to sprinkler for the house. Internal to the structure. Yeah. So is it your representation that you're, there's no yeah. internal sprinkler system proposed? No. Okay. I, I just ask that that be made a condition of the approval, just that that note be stricken from the plan. Is that something We're that's 100% fine with okay. striking that from the plan. Gotcha. I kind of figured you would be it's yeah no it's, 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 it's I nice to have but it's it could you know i misunderstood you i th i thought you were talking about irrigation system for the yard i was like yeah, that's, yeah. What I, yeah. that's what i thought at yeah. first too but we and that's when i when i first read it i'm like but it says according to you see it yeah second second line down on the right what does it say, Mike? Automatic sprinkler system, sprinkler system to be designed and installed in accordance with section yeah, NFPA. No, we have could totally yeah. strike that. And <laughs> yeah. Thanks for bringing it to our attention. That's just yeah. another thing that <laughs> we can uh, bring up to the architect. Okay, good. Because I had a bunch of questions about that, so we don't have to deal with that. Um, and you have a basement? Yes. 
finished? No. Okay. No, lots of records and yeah, <laughs> yeah, just like mine. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of records stuff. and bins. Of <laughs> so no, there. so no plans of no having living space down no. there. Um, that's it. Mike? I'm good. Mike? Any structural modifications to the garage area since you're going to have the bathroom over it? Um, nothing that we were told needed to be, needed to be done. Um, we don't know much as far as architecture or engineering, so we're kind of leaving it in, you know, the professional's hands, and they didn't seem to mention anything. Uh, that I'm aware of. Is there anything that you're aware of? No. That should go through the building department anyway for any no, I would think, permits yeah. for that. So I didn't see anything on the plan, yeah. so I looked at it. Nothing else. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm good. No. We're good? Okay, well, I guess we'll have to open this up to public then. Mm -hmm. All right? Yes, sir. And there's no public, well, can I have a motion to open to the public, motion please? To open to the public. Uh, we have a second? A second. We got a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Eileen? At this time, the chairman has opened the hearing up for members of the public. If anyone has any questions or comments on this application, please step forward. You'll be required to be sworn in and give your name and address. Chairman, motion to close to the public. Not seeing anyone. We have a motion to close the public. Second. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Eileen, we're closed to public. Public is now closed. Okay. So, Charlie? The only comment that I have is uh, you heard the applicant put testimony in the record. I just ask that uh, no internal fire suppression systems be a condition that that note be removed uh, from the architectural plan and resubmitted for resolution compliance. Uh, and then you've heard the representation, uh, no additional bedrooms, they get a letter of no interest from Board of Health, and that uh, there's no intent to have habitable basement or convert the garage to a bedroom at this point in time. Um, I just ask that those be put into the record in the resolution. So that's all I have. Got it. Roger, thanks. Do you have any further, last comments for the board? No. no. Okay, then what's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I'll make a motion to approve based on the finding of facts. It's a very simple modification and motion to approve. Okay, thank you. Do we have a second? A second. second. Okay, Barillo. So we got Martins and Barillo. Eileen, roll yes. call, please. Mr. Barillo? Yes. Mr. Cantor? Yes, it's Mr. a very Martins. pretty house. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. 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 Martins. Yes, and good luck. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Rebell? Yes, and I just wanted to add on the record, I think one of the things Charlie mentioned was the uh, future impervious cover just to make that, uh, provide that relief here and now. Uh, so I just wanted to put that back on the record there. And that's a yes. And Chairman Saya? Yes. Motion carries. Applications approved. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Best of luck. Right. Appreciate Thanks it. Thank much. you. Thank you. Okay, Eileen, any, any other further business? Good luck. Uh, yes, we have to go back to the yearly uh, review of the resolution. Yes, and we're going to add tonight's meeting to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I read through it yesterday. Does anyone have any questions relative to the yearly review? Mr. Ryan? No. You're good. Pretty and pretty detailed. Charlie, I take it you had a lot of input there? I had a couple of verbs that I gave Andy, so hopefully it's intelligible and uh, <laughs> makes <laughs> sense. <laughs> but I think if you look back at this versus prior years, you know, you can see a lot of the recommendations that we have made are actually getting struck out because the governing body is codifying those. We just had a handful, I think, what, Eileen, within the last two weeks? Seven was? ordinances, yes. yeah, or yeah, something like so, that, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's the goal of what we do the yearly review. We provide recommendations, and it's nice to see that those are uh, acted upon. So hopefully we start to see maybe less applications here, maybe more to the planning board, or maybe not coming to the board at all, you know, which I think uh, helps out our residents throughout town. So. Absolutely, Charlie. Yeah. Thank you.
I'm giving Mr. Borello a chance to finish oh. up. I was just looking at this one because um, number five with the um, accessory structures capped at 400 square feet, I think it's saying. And our there was an application that was um, carried tonight that has, I think their accessory, accessory structure is almost like eight or 900 square feet or something like that. Are they like grandfathered in? How does that work, like going forward? Well, we shouldn't be talking about an application if it's still pending. Okay. Uh, how about a hypothetical? Um, like if a building's more than 400 square feet? Yes. Yeah, so they applied, and now this becomes the ordinance. But well, it's the time of decision, so the, the law and the, the ordinance in effect at the time of application. Ordinance in effect at the yeah. time of the application. Yeah, and this is just recommendations here. Unless that's already in the ordinance that's been issued. So these are our recommendations. Yes. Yes. Then they, they may or may not. Correct. Oh, okay. gotcha. Yes. Wasn't that one of the new ordinances? It was, John, accessory structures. We've been recommending 400 square feet for a long time. Is that an ordinance now? No. Oh. Okay. Yeah. When we when the rules committee met, Mr. Chairman, we had crossed off a few. This was not one of them. Got it. So we're still recommending it. Yeah, uh, I got you. Okay, good. All right, so with that being said, um, you know, do we have a motion to approve the uh, yearly review? Motion to approve. Uh, we had a motion to review. approve. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Mr. Cantor, Mr. Barillo, and Mr. Cantor. Eileen, roll call, please. Mr. Barillo? Yes. Mr. Cantor? Yes. Mr. Mertens? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Rebell? Yes. And Chairman Sayer? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, so wishing everyone a happy new year. We won't see each other until such time. Mm -hmm. Our first meeting is? January 8th. January 8th. And um, stay healthy. Stay happy. You. May I have a meeting to adjourn, please? Meeting to adjourn. Uh, uh, a motion. motion. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, had to, I had to put it. Okay, motion to uh, adjourn. All right, thank you. Second. All, right, all in favor? Aye. 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 This meeting's adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year.